Do you suffer from fatigue, brain fog, lightheadedness, reduced athletic performance, flat muscles, headaches? Do you suffer from all those? Well, you probably think you're dehydrated, so you're already drinking a lot of water. What the hell is going on? Well, here's the deal. You might need to increase salt. Without enough sodium, here's what happens when you drink a lot of water. It goes right through you. If you're drinking a lot of water and it's not solving those problems and you're confused, you're thinking to yourself, I can't possibly be dehydrated. I'm drinking so much water. It's because the water is not getting into your cells and salt is essential for that. So look at your diet, look at your sodium intake, especially if you work out hard, you might need to increase your sodium intake. Try it, see what happens. I'm uh, glad you brought up uh, flat muscles. I think we said something on an episode recently and I actually got some messages in regards to like what that means. And so maybe go into a little bit more detail on what we mean by uh, flat muscles or a flat look that you get. Well, muscles are 70% fluid. Okay. So if they're not, if they don't have enough fluid in them and fluid in a muscle is not bloat. So people uh, confuse it too. Bloat is outside the muscle under the skin. You want well-hydrated muscles. Well-hydrated muscles contract better, perform better, recover faster. Um, they look more full and sculpted. Um, it's, it's a good thing. You want well-hydrated muscles. If they're not hydrated, they're going to look smaller, flabbier. So this is the thing. If your muscles are flat, you actually look like you have higher body fat. Bodybuilders know this, right? You look like your muscles aren't as developed. You don't look as lean. And then when you work out, you just don't feel as connected to the exercise. And if you're somebody that likes the pump, you just don't get the pump. Um, and, and this can feel like you're going backwards. It can feel like you're losing muscle. It can feel like you're gaining body fat. When in reality, your, your muscles just aren't, they just don't have as much fluid in them as they might have had before or as much as they could have. And this is, bodybuilders understand this very well, by the way. They play this game exceptionally well before they get on stage because it makes a huge difference. I'm actually going to challenge that a little bit. This was one of the things that I was so surprised that bodybuilders didn't know very well. Well, they know about it is what I mean. Yeah. they and So they actually pull water going into a show. Like the day of a show, they have no water. Yeah. Which I thought was so interesting that they would do that. And they're looking to pull like all the water out so their skin looks like yeah. paper thin. But then you do that and you also obviously pull it out of the muscles. And so, you know, if you're a competitor and you're listening to this and you got a coach who completely pulls water, uh, you know, and, and the kind of a standard look to that would be, you know, depending on what they led up to their peak, the three days going into showtime, they go from like a gallon to three quarters to a half to a quarter to nothing on yeah. show day. Uh, maybe they're getting to sip a tiny bit. And I, it's not smart. It's crazy. It's uh, now I do think there's some uh, validity to trying to pull all that out. So you get that like kind of like a subcutaneous water that you yeah. get to where you have that. And, and that's what they're trying it's to a balancing act, right? It is a balancing yeah. act. So you do want to reduce some water to get that um, or pull it and then reintroduce it because that's part of what fills the muscle bellies back out and gives you this full look. And so I, I was surprised on how many coaches and bodybuilders actually did. And now you might ask like, well, they look amazing. Well, yeah, they're 2% body fat. So even flat muscles at 2% mm. is going to look defined. Yeah, but what, what, what they understand, what bodybuilders know is that this is an important part of their appearance on stage. And a bodybuilder can go from first place to fifth place or 10th place. Just off of water. Just off of this 100%. because it makes up so much of your yes. muscle bellies and how you look. And then if there's been extreme cases. Now, of course, we're talking about pro bodybuilding now. So the average person isn't going to connect to this. I, they are though. And I will make that connection. That's why I like to talk about this. I know it's because the biggest takeaway that I had from this experience for me had nothing to do with bodybuilding and everything to do with learning to connect with my clients that went, and we've all heard oh, this. The sale goes up. Or yes. Down. Yeah. We've mm -hmm. all heard this where you, you've got a client, they're doing perfect on their diet. They're training with you consistently and they swear that they are like, I look puffier or I, lo I look, I, I, or the scale has actually gone up a mm -hmm. pound or two and they're discouraged because of what they see in the reflection of the mirror and or what they see yeah. on the scale. And because of my experience in that and, and, and recognizing how much you can manipulate yeah. 
water weight. See the extreme version, and then you can apply it to to regular like uh, you can scale that back down. The same thing with like weight cuts, like the dramatic yeah. weight cuts that you'll see where fighters will will do basically everything they can to sweat it all out, and you know, and, and so too the dangers of both of those things, right? And, and you, Back in the day, they used to do the like distilled water and do oh, that, yeah. where they like even rip out like salt and all that. And, like Bro, they dangerous. Do, they that do is. some. That's crazy. Do that still? Yeah. Do, but yeah, you know what I was going to say about the bodybuilders is some of them had died on stage or yeah. they seized up because right. of because of that because of this. But for the average person, um, a lot of people don't know this, but your your for your cells to utilize water and fluid, they need the electrolytes, and sodium is one of the most important parts. Without it. The water not only doesn't get absorbed in the cell, um, it actually will dehydrate you. So if you had zero sodium and drank a ton of distilled water, which has no minerals in it whatsoever, you'll die. Yeah. yeah. It's dangerous. So this is very important. And and now I remember the first time this happened to me, I not to me personally, but to a client. I had a client who went from a heavily processed diet to whole natural foods, which already, and at the time I didn't fully understand this, Okay. Uh, but uh, now I know this, a heavily processed food diet is always very high in sodium. Sodium is always high in heavily processed foods because sodium is a integral part in palatability. They know this, it's salt, sugar, fat. Those are the three main ingredients. And there's lots of chemicals and other things they do, but those are the three ingredients in making something palatable. And sodium is easy to add, doesn't change the calories. People don't typically freak out if something's high sodium is like they would if it was fat or sugar, although some people do. But they'll, everything's high sodium when it's heavily processed. And if you go from that to whole natural foods, you've already, even if you salt your food, dramatically reduced your sodium. So I used to train this woman. She went from heavily processed to whole and natural. And then she started getting uh, muscle cramps and headaches. And these are all the signs of dehydration. Yeah. So what did she do? I'm dehydrated. I'm going to drink more water. Mm -hmm. And then I'm still getting these problems. I'm going to drink more water. She was drinking up to a gallon a day. She was peeing yes. all day long, couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. And thankfully, I had somebody in my studio who was much smarter than I was on this. This was a wellness individual, wellness expert. And she could hear us talking in the background. It was a small studio. And she said, hey, do you mind if I if I chime in? And I'm like, no, of course. I'd love, like, what do you think is going on? She goes, y she needs more sodium. I'm like, sodium? And she goes, your, your cells need sodium and magnesium in order to, especially the sodium part, this is the part that, you know, she realized was the problem to pull the water into the cells without yes. that mm -hmm. it's you're drinking all this water and you're not getting much of it at all. Literally within the workout. Okay. I went in the back cause I used to have a little kitchen in the back where I would eat, you know, in between clients, I had some Himalayan pink salt and I gave her a teaspoon of it with some water. It's a lot of salt, right? So she's like choking it down, drank it within 15 minutes. She's like, yeah. I feel way different within 15 minutes. It was crazy. That was the first time I realized like, oh, just drinking a lot more water, uh, you know, that it doesn't necessarily fix the problem if right. your sodium isn't adequate. And if you sweat and you work out and you don't eat a lot of processed foods, you're probably going to want to add sodium to your diet more than just the salt on your you yeah. know, chicken breast. I went whatever. through that same process with athletes I was training and even myself where it was like you're, you feel like you're doing everything dialed in and perfect too because now you're adjusting – uh, I mean, even just getting an athlete to look into their, their nutrition and to kind of get more in the whole food side of things. And, um, then also too, to be well hydrated because, you know, having, having dry ligaments and having things like that, like is that's, that's alarming. That's something that, uh, you you don't want that. You want that Cause elasticity. Injury. Yeah. So that's, that's one of those things that, that sticks out as, as a potential harm. So. Um, to be able to now add in uh, electrolytes or a pinch of, of salt, like that that was game changer for a lot of athletes that kept having over and over again cramps and issues while they're sprinting. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I saw an immediate effect of that. I can't tell you how many family members and friends that I've had that have expressed to me, like I've talked about the health benefits of the sauna before. And they've told me, oh, they don't like doing the sauna because they always get headaches from it. Yeah, they're like yeah. healthy people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, uh, how much sodium are you intaking? Oh, I don't know. They don't really track. Oh, yeah. I eat healthy. So they're like, so that they assume because they make good food choices. Nobody or, knows. Know, that they're not concerned or worried about that. I'm like, no, it's even more important because you eat healthy. You don't eat a lot of processed foods. You work out and exercise. You run, you do all these things. And then in addition to that, you go do a sauna 
and you get these massive headaches from it. I, and I tell them like next time, just use a packet of the element before or during while you're doing that. Yeah. And what a difference. And it's like literally solves the problem. Right my away. dad, my dad loves the sauna. He loves sauna in steam room. And he goes, I can't do it for too long. And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, well, I can stay in there for a long time. He goes, but then I'm like, he goes, I'm so groggy and tired and low energy for the rest of the day. And even sometimes the next day. So he had, I had seen him the other day cause he came over to, to fix something and he's very good with, uh, you know, fixing things and stuff like that. I'm not. So, Hey dad, come help me or whatever. So he comes over and he had just come from the gym and he's like, Oh, I'm, I'm like, how you doing? He's like, I feel tired. I'm like, what happened? He goes, I did the sauna for 35 minutes. And he goes, sometimes it just kills me. I'm like, dad here. And I give him element. I'm like, drink this. I said, if you feel better in the next 10 minutes, it's because the reason why that happens to you is because your sodium's low. He drank it 10 minutes later. He's like, what did you give me? I'm like, literally like it's magnesium, potassium, but mostly salt. He's like salt. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's yep. all it is. Yep. It's crazy. By the way, uh, element is the highest ranked, uh, product that we promote in our forum. Oh really? Yeah. I forgot who did it. Uh, I think Helen did it in the forum. She said, what are your favorite um, products or sponsors that work with mind pump element was the winner. Now there's a self-selection bias in our forum because these are all fitness and health yeah, people. Sure. So they all pro avoid heavily processed foods, but it was the mo it was the one that everybody said. They yeah. Used. It was probably one of those things. Like we said, it was overlooked because mm -hmm. you think you're doing everything right. Yeah. It's one of the most consistent ones that I hear, even outside of our forum. It's up there. If it's not the number one, it's, it's top. I'd say like at least top yeah. three for sure. Yeah. 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 Today's program giveaway is MAPS Anabolic Advanced. Here's how you can win it. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We're also running a sale right now. MAPS Symmetry is half off and the RGB bundle is half off. If you're interested in either one or both, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. So I was going to ask, so uh, I want to bring this up because I thought this was funny. So on our Instagram... Once is it once a week that we do the day in the life? It's once a week, right? Once a week. So yeah. uh, we get on there once a week, one of us. So it will it'll be me or Adam or Justin or Doug. And we do what's called the day in the life. And we just show what we're doing throughout the day, maybe what we're eating or, you know, what we do in the morning, workout, just literally day in the life. And those get the most views um, out of any story we do on the Instagram. And we all don't like doing it because we're not super social media guys. Like it's not like, Hey, look what I'm, it's like kind of like annoying, but we do it. People love it. We, we work, we, you know, communicate with people fine. So, you know, we, Adam came up with this great idea where our staff members would also do one throughout the week. So people could see like what our assistant does, what our, whatever. And so we were in a meeting with, and Adam was, Adam's wife was here. And he goes, yeah, honey, you're going to do this too. She's like, I'm not doing it. I'm like, this is going to be great. <laughs> this is going to be great. Immediate resistance. she works with us. I'm like, <laughs> oh, this is going to be good, dude. She's going to be the most resistant for sure. Yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm. You got you to tell her what time it is. There's a few people I think are going to have a hard time. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait. This is going to be the biggest I'm, I'm preparing battle. My, yeah, I'm preparing myself for the battle uh, on, and how this goes. And so. I mean, I hope I get her too. There's a lot of people that are are really curious. I mean, I was, the, what really prompted this, I don't know who I was talking to. I was talking to somebody uh, about the business. Because she hates social media. Oh, yeah. She no, doesn't even like, have it. She's never been on. No, right? yeah. She's not on anything. Yeah, she's not yeah. anything. She hasn't, she hasn't been on anything since like MySpace days. Like, and she, Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Yeah. And she did that for a minute. And then Facebook was new. She did Facebook. She told, she like, this, she, this is all pre-me. So this is over 13 years ago, yeah. right? So- and because I've asked her before, I'm like, hey, you know, it's you have no social media. Like what? This was back when I was first finding this all out. She goes, yeah, you know, I had a Facebook and a MySpace a little bit. And she goes, and then I, I'd, I'd shut it off and then I'd turn it back on, shut it off. And I was like, well, why would you shut it off? She's like, you know, it, it always caused some sort of drama. There was always it always it, it always resulted well, in, right. in in jealousy or uh, you know some sort of like you know talking behind people's backs or just, she goes I just recognized that you know a lot of a lot of drama was connected with it and I just didn't want to, and then I would shut it off and then people would be like oh I can't connect to you and then, you know, family and so she goes then I turn it back on and then it would lead to another scenario like that and she goes I just. I just find it toxic, and so I don't want it in my life. And so I made a decision. And this, like you said, before me, we're 13 years, so this is 14, 15 years ago. She had made that decision, and has been. And so she is like super anti being on it. Whenever, if anyone's ever noticed, when I'm ever doing like stories, like when I, it is my day in the life. 
like she would normally like bolt out of the room. She'll like walk away. Yeah, if she sees me do this, she's out. Yeah, yeah. She'll 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 cut out or she'll turn or yeah. So she does not like to be on it. And I love that, right? So I and I I hate to be like want to be like force her to be on it. But I, I would where this started. It was actually Jordan Syatt. That's I was talking. I was talking to Jordan Syatt. We caught up with him. He came into town to visit us, and a show is coming up soon with him. And he, he we were just catching up. It's been years since he was here, and he was asking about the how many employees, and he was just like, "Oh my god, I had no idea you guys have that many people working for the company." And I'm like, "Yeah, you know what? It's funny. I get that a lot, and we tend to like drop names in conversation mm-hmm. on here, and I get DMs all the time, like." Who's who? Who's Dylan? Who's Jerry? Who's like people are always at? So I don't know. I think uh, I, I think it'd be great. I think if mm-hmm. I was on the other side, I would be curious about. I'm also interested to see how they what they show. Yeah, yeah I want to see say. their perspective because we're yeah. super like um, like if you're especially if you're doing it and you're being humorous and you, even if you want to poke fun at us or talk about, we love it. Like yeah, we're not we, like we definitely can handle. We're it. We're not insecure. Yeah, yeah, we we love it. Like go for it. Have a good time and we all laugh about it and stuff. Yeah, but, so the audience can look forward to that. We're gonna roll it out soon. So how, how are you gonna convince her? Uh, probably gonna threaten her with her pay. Probably. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's my that's hey, my that's my that's ace in the hole. Are you, are, you, I have are, to. Are you go home? <laughs> I'm. This is the call. We're doing. No, that. no. I'll try sweet. I'll do sweet first. Always. Like, hey, honey. You know, just everybody else is gonna do it, and you know, <laughs> you you can't have you the only one who's yeah. not. It'll look yeah. bad, and you know, you're, I'll, you're a team player. I'll go that the angle, the day, and yeah. then I'll be like, well, you know, I guess we could reduce your pay by twenty five percent. So we'll see. <laughs> We'll see how this yeah, goes. goes. So yeah. I mean, I hope I hope I could get her. To, I, I know we were in the meeting. And you said that she's like, nope, not doing it. And I'm like, oh, this yeah. could be a great yeah. conversation. Great idea. No, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love we'll, it. We'll see how how that goes. Yeah. I appre- hey, listen, that's a cool thing that she. I mean, Jessica was on there. She built her business, and then you know, as a kid, she was on there. You know, she was younger than I am, but then she went off, and she, now she's going back on a little bit. But she went off for the same reason. She's like, it's just it. It was not a a value add to my life. It was yeah. a minus. It took away from my life. I mean, it was actually something we shared in common. So yeah. um, I wasn't either. So no, people, you went on to yeah, a business. Program. I literally yeah. turned YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram on all in the same week, all with the intent to uh, build a business. I, mm-hmm. Now I knew I had no idea what I was doing <laughs> at all, um, or what it was going to look like. I didn't know that we would all get together mm-hmm. one day. But I literally only I had MySpace and I had MySpace for a short period of time. I wonder I, if the, does it still there? Do you you yeah. had we found yours a while ago. Well, yeah, it was it was just it wasn't like my personal. It was like my band. Just because. Can you look us up, Doug? Look up MySpace Adam Schaefer. I don't know. Yeah, if I that, don't know if it's it's still around. it's still a thing. Like I, don't I think know, a good question. I think I it hasn't. Died, that would be funny, but, bro. If that, if, did you nobody's music, interacting. I don't know. On there. Did you have bro. music playing in the background? Yeah, I did. I had like uh, matter of fact, I remember. I think it was trapped. Justin knows who that is. Yeah, so a hard rock band. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, that was your that was your song. That yeah, I think, plays, that's, you I think that's why I liked it. I thought yeah. it was cool because you could do that. You I know? liked it because of the yeah the music because it, yeah. it, it tied you a lot more to underground music. Yes, and people I were did sharing like that. stuff. But yeah, Tom never did us wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. that guy was solid. Hey, didn't he? he didn't up, sell our shit. Didn't to he end up like broke or whatever like that? What happened to him? Do you know? Do you know his Andrew? You know his yeah, backstory? I don't know. I don't know his story. Yeah, I was reading an article and I'm gonna try to pull it up real quick, but. Basically, I know he sold a, a ton, like millions off oh, of it. Oh, he did make millions. And oh, he just went off and just off the grid and went to go live He was just life. like, peace. He was, like, he was always- stayed off social media. Yeah. Like, Wasn't he the first course, friend you would get when you- Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. He's yeah, the yeah. only one That's there why it's like an the ongoing desk. joke because everybody's been, been, Tom's been his, their friend, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, and yeah. everybody can probably recognize that photo of him that, so he's- Okay, okay, okay. So he- <laughs> Oh, he great. sold for five hundred and eighty million dollars. Wow! Before retiring, two thousand nine. Now forty seven years old, living out his dreams in Hawaii as a travel photographer. Oh wow! wow. So that's dope. good for him. What well, a great story! Man, yeah. I would love to get him. Wouldn't that be a fun interview? That would be Are a you real kidding fun me? Interview, yeah. He probably hides. He probably don't want send to what, get, get, send what you got over to Courtney and uh, let's get his ass on the show and, and Katrina and see what they can do. That would be a really cool. Bro, he, this was social media totally. before social media become, it became a tool of the freaking you know, <laughs> the machine of the, yeah, yeah the propaganda dude. and crap. It was all oh, pure. Man. I mean, how cool is that? That the guy who, you know, yeah, was a part Empire of inventing over. it and, and starting it cashed out and then just disappeared. Just took yeah, yeah, no, family. No, no desire. To, I'm sure he's 40 something years old now. I'm sure he, I'm sure he wouldn't have a problem finding a wife. With well, that of course, but, you know, <laughs> I'm sure, sure he's, 
he's doing all right. I wonder if he gets traveling the world with a with a camera like, oh, in no, Hawaii. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's. Wonder if he gets How recognized. Can I get attention. Hey, I you? doubt it. Actually, I mean, I guess that he does have that. Famous I know. What, I can picture the his, right now the picture. I wouldn't he's be in a white shirt. And then he's if I saw desk, that photo, like, I would obviously recognize remember. the photo. Yeah. But if he, I could be in line with him and not know who he is. I bet. I mean, he's got to be off all social media. Otherwise, people would know what's going on. He's sure. probably anti. Yeah. yeah. That would be very interesting. Yeah, I yeah. think that's cool. Yeah, cool. Dude, you know what I learned the other day, Justin? I thought of you when I saw this because you like this kind of stuff. Huh. Do you know that there are tribes that use, they use an insect to sew up um, cuts like sutures? Do you want to know what they use? An insect? Yeah. Like, is it like an extraction from the insect no. or is it the actual insect? They use army ants. So if oh. they have a big cut, yes, they'll put the army ants because they bite down to like suture their m mandibles yeah. over the the cut. The I mandibles will squeeze together because they the, pop the, the head ant, off, is, and then they'll pull the the kill the ant, take off the head, what? or or take off the body, and the little but head the, is the there. The pictures keep pinching the whole time, and they it keep keeps. It together. Yeah, look it up, Doug. Look I, I, I want to see that. Yeah. Army cool. ants uh, for wounds or for or as sutures. I saw this the other day on social media. That's wild. So smart. Yeah, dude. So these are like, they have a cut. They want it to heal. Look at that. Bro. Look at the finger of that guy's finger. It actually looks like stitches. It does. Isn't that like, so I, I find that so cool when you're I like a low tech, like culture or whatever, like, but you find ways to, to solve a lot of these problems. Yeah, like, dude, that, this could what, really what prevent. Great solution. Bro, that has to be like a serious bite though, to actually hold skin together. Oh like yeah. That. It's an army. Look, oh, look, yeah. look, at, look at the one over there on the top left. Look at that. Look at those mandibles, dude. They're they're no joke. And they're they're organic. <laughs> no, so I can Then weird. it dissolves eventually, right? I think so. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Huh. Do you, okay, God, so how, okay, that to I mean, you get tweezers and then you put it right in place and then it's got a bite just right. No, then, you don't tweeze anything. The mandibles no, just, are wide. It clamps down first. No, so I you, know, you, but you have to cut its head off. No, you after pull, a bite, it pulls its body off. You pull it off. It bites down and it just holds and then on. And they twist it and yeah. Pull, yeah. Wow. It doesn't release. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like that that contraction that still happens, like even after people die. So, so the two things that could possibly help you survive if you're ever in a situation. <laughs> yeah. That's one. Here's another one, and I learned this from this old surgeon that I used to train. So I used to train this surgeon. Well, glue, like super glue is another. Yeah, so that's that, was my, that was my dad, my, yeah. my, my stepdad. Every construction. Every construction. Yeah, contractor. Super glue. Dude, my dad used to I can't be good. I, <laughs> dude, I did that a few times when I cut my fingers for like playing in a show because like I, I don't know, I was playing and I, and I had to slice and I was like, oh no, I have to like super perform glue. tonight so I super glued it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, work. that's, that's a, every construction. Super, super glue, toilet paper, and then duct tape. That was like the movie. <laughs> that, it's, 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 <laughs> why is wow. that everybody? Super <laughs> reinforced. Yeah. 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 My dad, you know what my dad did a couple times with me? I cut my hand helping him whenever I was a kid. He'd take dry cement powder put it on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. God, it would just work. Like, okay. <laughs> I felt like a badass though, you know, I'm like 12 years old. Like, yeah. Yeah. Dude. Check this out. Cemented. Anyway, so I learned this from an old surgeon. <clears throat> I used to train the surgeon. He was just about to retire. So people need to, and he would, I would hear stories about him and I'd hear him tell me stories. And what people don't know is that surgeons, if you go back, uh, you know, 40 years, cause he's, he was, let me see. He was, he was already in his 60s, so I think he'd been already you know, practicing for 30-something or 40 years. Back in the day, surgeon was God. Like, you walk in the hospital, they're kind of like that now, but back then it was really like, they call the shots. They could do whatever they want. You do what they say. The training was crazy. He said he when he was in training, he would tell me stories where they, he was in, in the ER, and then the, you know this guy, blood was squirting everywhere, and he was a kid, and he was like freaked out because he's trying to help him, and he's like, this other old surgeon is like, slapped him and like fixed it real quick and like, you know, scolded him. He's like, it was hardcore. But anyway, he said, if you're ever in, in, in nature and you get a cut and it starts to get infected, he goes, the best way to clean it. You want to know what it is? Pee on it. Maggots. Maggots. Oh, maggots. Yeah. yeah they love actually. eating dead skin. You put maggots on a wound and yeah. maggots will only eat dead flesh. It will, he says it will clean mm -hmm. the wound better than any doctor that you can imagine. You put maggots on it, cleans the whole thing out and you're fine. Mm -hmm. How crazy is that? It's yeah. so okay. The, it's better than anything that we have. That's now? what he said. I don't know if he's being like, um, you know, like he was Hyperbole, exaggerating. Yeah. yeah. But he yeah. said, he said, if you're in, if you're out in nature and you have a, a cut and yeah. you're like, uh oh, that might not be good. Ma you get some maggots on there. He goes, it'll <clears> take care of the problem. Isn't that it'd crazy? Be, it'd be, the power it, of if, maggots. If it was that powerful, you think we would use that still? As, I mean, as gross as it is, it's why? If it's, if, if, you really think we would? If it's more effective? 
Yeah, how much profit you make off of maggots? Well, I mean, yeah, sure. and people tend to get a uh, little there, there it uncomfortable is. with that. Maggots idea. can also be used. Maggot therapy involves the use of maggots uh, of the green bottle fly. Prone to are, re-slothing? What is re-slothing? Um, I think What's that Doug? I don't know. Re-slothing is, what is but, re-slothing. But look what it says there: to remove necrotic sloth, slothy and or infected tissue. I think that's tissue that's about to become necrotic or is hmm. already dead, but not yet. I don't know. Huh. I'm guessing. Yeah, Slothy is yeah. yellow white tissue as it's healing. It looks pretty nasty. I'm not going to show you guys uh, pictures. Uh, yeah, know, look at that. So it's when it's all infected and pussy looking. Yeah, yeah but exactly. why, why, why do you think they wouldn't use maggots? First off, patients probably don't want it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you don't want to go to the doctor. They're going to put maggots on you. And number two, what are the what are the profit margins on maggots? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I can go outside and get my Yeah, own. and how long does it take? You know, I mean, are we that terrible that we, ch now? we choose to not? Not do things that are more effective. I mean, that's so. That's I don't so, know if it's more effective though. But yeah, it, that, so it is we, effective. We found something that is uh, easier and you know relatively inexpensive yeah. and more effective than it makes sense. But if it's like yeah. that's still if it's still proven to be better, it'd be mm -hmm. weird to not. These are all like good like MacGyver survival. <laughs> MacGyver. Total, hey, good. speaking of stick of gum and foil. Speaking of of good of of interesting information, I was reading these uh, conspiracy theories on movies. Where you know it'll say like like there's an alternate theory and it kind of makes sense when you think about it. Mm -hmm. And I read one about John Wick that blew my mind. So you guys have seen John Wick, yeah, right? Really? Great movie. Yeah. They said th the theory was that John Wick is Neo if he swallowed the blue pill. Whoa! Isn't that crazy? Okay. So he never swallowed the red pill. He swallowed the blue pill, and then that's Neo in the Matrix. Wow! Not knowing, kind of okay. makes sense, right? Yeah. I don't know if I get that. Remember when he could swallow the No, no, of course I know the red pill, blue pill whole decision to be like aware of the Matrix or not aware yeah. of the Matrix, but how does that make any sort of... Because he's a badass still, you know? He's still fighting and being a badass. Yeah, Don't ruin a, this, Adam. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just like... You can poke the, holes in it. I like the the, uh, the concept. But, yeah. yeah, I just... It's like... Well, I mean, it could uh, be a, a million things. You could probably say that about his any other movie. I don't know. I don't know if well, I Well, my like favorite that. thing about the John Wick series is what somebody created like this uh, running tally of, of kills. Yeah. And it just... <laughs> you just like are stacking bodies, dude. I mean, it, it, from the first film to what he's up to like four now. Yeah. Like, and it just keeps increasing. How many in kills? And people don't even realize realize yeah. like how many kills i don't know i have to look it up like what what the actual love total is now but it was just like it's actually good it, i uh, love I, it man i hate it when movies uh that are bullshit try to be too realistic yeah, it doesn't, i like it because they don't pretend it yeah it doesn't yeah. i i appreciate yeah. that too i, I think uh, like a, a movie that is like 80 or 90 percent very realistic and then it has mm -hmm. this like small percent 439 <laughs> 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 That's uh, so many. <laughs> bro, it went up to look. The first one is 77. Then it goes to 128. Then it goes to 140. And then, oh, so it's 194 and a third. Oh, oh they oh, went, went down. down. Come on, it man. It went down. Yeah, well, you, we I, you know, I wonder if they like Stupid. write and they go like, oh, you know, we got to back off those little yeah. crazy yeah. people. So made less let's money. give, let's yeah, give yeah. somebody else a turn, you yeah. know, to, to make some kills. <laughs> yeah, they got to go hard. Has, I, any, has any movie surpassed the, uh, the infamous scene in heat for the most bullets ever fired in a scene oh has that ever been question. passed that was the record back then are you sure oh yeah it was more yeah. than commando or yes oh yeah so another <laughs> oh, set yeah. like big lebowski had the most swear words i believe yeah oh really yeah and, you, and it's cool because it's like it, it's subtle like it's just part of their language so you don't realize there's cussing the whole time oh i don't know that that was a record yeah they had the it, it had the, are you the sure? longest and most bullets ever fired in a gun scene Ever really? Yeah, at that time, I don't know if it's been surpassed. I remember now, Commando, bro, and Arnold comes out, and he just <laughs> dude. Do you not remember that scene? I do. <laughs> That's it was a, a great movie. I mean, it's literally a fully automatic gunfight with like twelve guys, non, and it's like literally a twenty-minute scene. That's right, nonstop. Yeah, I mean, that's it's, right. Uh, okay, that's right. I was I, I'm, I'm have curious to about. That. I, I know it was that. then. I knew that stat back then. What I'm curious about is if it's been surpassed. You like, know what's funny to me is, uh, do you guys remember the first time you held? like an actual gun and realize how heavy they are. Yeah. And then you watch movies and you're like, <laughs> they're like, yeah, you know, like, like, bro, your arm you will can't be hold dead. it like this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> or like, well, you know, like Arnold's holding like two like machine guns in each arm. You ever hold? So I, I I've actually held cause I have family. They say that's impossible. It would do this. It, yeah. Each bullet mm -hmm. would come and they're heavy. Yeah, you end up going up like that. Yeah. And they're heavy. It's not, you hold one in each hand and yeah, you can yeah. do this for hours and yeah, you're killing a bunch yeah. of people. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to happen. <laughs> no. Anyway. Yeah, but it looks cool. Yeah. So that's all that matters. So I learned something else really interesting. Um, it, this is crazy. I love reading about, I'm not going to su think, suggest this by the way, as a recovery tool. So let me just say that first, but I read, I, I watched this video 
and then I looked it up to confirm it. There's a popular medication that they've shown to dramatically improve recovery. And it has nothing, this, this is a drug that is not for recovery. But when they give it to people before and after surgery or injuries or burns, the recovery from, from this particular drug that's connected to this drug is like dramatic. It's an unintended sort of uh, uh, benefit? Yeah, beta huh. blockers. Oh. Beta blockers dramatically improve, like massively in these studies, recovery. The theory is because yeah, the, theory? the theory is that beta because what, what do beta blockers do right they they don't allow your heart rate to get up too high right uh -huh. the theory is that it's blunting the um the, the sympathetic response oh, to stress okay so you know keeping your stress sort of like managed correct base, so yeah. you know sympathetic right that's like fight or fly and you need it for a certain extent but if it's a, a real high it can compromise recovery because. Parasympathetic is where you recover. So right. that's interesting because you would think that's something that would heighten the heart rate, would pump more blood, more oxygen that would speed up the recovery process. No, it's, not it's the opposite. because you have more, well, more adrenaline, pace, more cortisol. Yeah. Right. More so stress. I mean, I get it now that you're breaking it down, but yeah. I think uh, you would you would think that it would be the other way. So I went down the rabbit hole because I'm like, huh. okay, I read these studies. So these studies were done on um, people going into surgery or having burns. And it was like a dramatic difference. It wasn't like a small difference. It was dramatic. So I thought, what athlete do you guys think would get a hold of this and want to decide to experiment with this? What who's the most chemically experimental bodybuilders? Bodybuilders. Yeah. So sure enough, I went on forums, and you guys know that some bodybuilders use beta blockers for recovery. I actually think I've heard this. What? Yeah, I think yeah. I have heard this. for really, really. I, I feel like, like they're, <laughs> yeah. they're just human experiments rock, walking around. Dude, hey, you're welcome. They're the first, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you think we learn? Hey, yeah, yeah. God yeah. bless you. Say, you know, you're welcome. You're walking pharmacy. You know, we can learn from you, dude. Yeah. So they'll actually use this in, during bulking season because it also could prevent fat loss to an extent because you want those stress hormones, or whatever. So they use them during bulking season when they're training their asses off, feeding themselves like crazy. And they'll say, and I was reading comments in the forum. I would not recommend this. Do not take oh, a beta God. blocker for recovery. Okay? Will try this yeah, that's but I think the dynamite one sketchy, is the craziest. Bro. That to me is the wildest. What's it called? DNT? I forget no, what DNT, it's called. Yeah, Doug, look up this. DNT for fat loss and, and see what comes up. I mean, this is stuff they use to make dynamite and, and bodybuilders will take it. I don't know how. I think it was fat. Dan Duquesne. So Dan Duquesne has passed away, but he was, uh, I mean, he was like the black market cosmonaut. Uh, in the you know bodybuilding space, he would talk about different chemicals and medicines that theoretically could help with fat loss and muscle DNP DNP. So it stands for two four dinotrophenol. This is an ingredient in uh, dynamite, and I don't know how they figured it out. I think Dan Duquesne was the first one that speculated on this, but literally, I know. Like how how did you lead to that? Like, so he was like, like chewing on a thing of dynamite. One time, like, Man, I got lean today. This is crazy. <laughs> like, how does that like transpire? So, he, so Dan Duquesne was a super smart black market dude. I don't even think he was formally educated, but he would look at chemicals and how they act in the body. He would come up with theories. He would talk about them, experiment with them, mm. and then report on them. He wrote. Uh, the what was it called? The what was it the uh, something handbook or yeah. Bible steroid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the underground steroid Bible, something like that, the, right? Yeah, the underground steroid handbook. Look up Dan Duquesne steroid book and, and see. But um, so anyway, he wrote about this. People experimented with it, and literally, what they do, Justin, is they would take this, and then they would sit in bed and they would sweat and feel like they're gonna die. <laughs> cool. Okay, <laughs> but you know what they would report? Please don't do this. I'm going to say something and it's going to be some idiot. Ma massive fat loss. This will kill you. Okay. This is literally what can kill you. But they would drop like a percent or two body fat yeah. in like a couple Just days. Just from a sitting. In a couple days. In a couple days. Oh, body uh, opus. That's what it was. Uh, what? That's the it. And then the underground steroid handbook. I mean, clombuterol Crazy. is like is, is super effective too, but it also one of the scariest things I ever mess with. Like you accidentally take clombuterol a little... is Flintstone vitamins compared to DMP from what I read. Well, that's what's crazy to me because that scared the shit out of me. Was doing well, yeah, that. but didn't you? I did. I made. Didn't I you did, miss? I did. Didn't you move the decimal point? I know. Over? But I mean, that okay. You're talking <laughs> about like. So what's the what's the the di diabetic needles the uh, real skinny syringes right? Yeah. So you're talking about your your. The tiniest amount of fluid. Oh, you did it. The liquid one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, liquid under your tongue. Oh, shit. And so you're only taking in like a tiny, tiny bit. So it's, if, it's, it's dosed in micrograms. Yeah. Right? You could easily, you know, like 0.25 micrograms or something, right? right? Like you could easily do two or three times that and not even think it's that much. Yeah. 
And that's what happened to me. Like I, I did the math wrong on it. And <laughs> oh my god! I, no, I what thought I was, scary. I thought I was gonna die, dude. What happened? I, I mean, my my heart was pounding so hard, like all day long. Like it was, yeah. No, I got really. It was definitely the scariest thing that I ever messed with. And I just didn't think something so little that I was taking could possibly even have that kind of effact. And, yeah. It's but a, I mean, it's, a, it's an asthma. super effective, almost kills you, but yeah, super. Well, effective. I so, mean, it's, it's an asthma drug. They don't, they don't use it here in, anymore. I think in some, other, I think in South America and Mexico, I want to say uh, that they still prescribe it to, for asthma. They used to give it to cattle because it also uh, builds muscle. Not so much in humans for some reason. So that's why, well, yeah, muscle. but what it was so pro was that it would help like burn body fat or basically and preserve muscle and preserve muscle. Right, so right. that's why it's so popular. So they used to give it to cattle, but then it would get in the meat. And then some people would suffer from clenbuterol poisoning. And so they banned it, mm. uh, to giving it to cows. Also it's still used though. I know it's still used somewhere in some places. Yeah. But here in the U S they don't use clenbuterol anymore. They use albuterol. Albuterol is more selective. So clenbuterol affects the whole body. Including Isn't al that's what they use in inhalers, right? Correct. Yeah. You can also do albuterol, tablets which is old school they mm. still have those but albuterol is more selective to the lungs whereas clenbuterol hits the whole body so they went from clenbuterol to albuterol which is mm. more effective i know this because i had asthma as a kid and mm. i would use not clenbuterol mm. i used albuterol yeah. i was kind of pissed off i didn't get the hey you've been <laughs> you've been uh talking to your 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 cousins and family a lot investments about that what's the not to completely shift but i do want to um because I want to hear your thoughts on the market right now, like what's happening in the stock market, what's going on with real estate. Like, uh, it, well, the big talk is these uh, huge investors pulling their money out of the market. Um, yeah, right? you like, had the uh, Michael Burry bet, yep. which was a few billion Warren dollars. Buffett. Yeah, Buffett Warren, recently, right? Warren Buffett pulled eight eight billion out of the the stock market. That means That's that they're what expecting I pay attention. Like, whoa, yeah, yeah, they're expecting a big drop. Um, and then they'll probably put it back in and buy things when they're cheap. So, yeah. and so the prediction I've I heard, see. it's like, it's literally here, right? This, this month. So September to December is when most of the people that I follow that have been saying that this is where we're going to see it really unfold right now. So I'm really curious because I thought it was going to happen long ago. I thought we would have felt this, you know, more of this, I guess, in, in just like the last year or whatever. But I did read the stat, you know, this was, I read this yesterday. I think I saw Chris. My buddy Chris posted it, and it's like, man, that's wild. It would take a combination of up to 28% decline in home prices, a more than 4% reduction in 30-year mortgage rates, or up to 60% growth in median household incomes to bring home affordability back to its 25-year average. Wow. wow. That's how off we are. You know what the, the problem? That, I mean, because that's that's crazy. You know what the problem with the how with the housing market is that that they've they've encouraged and created because it was like here's what happened. It was like part of the American dream, own a home. Politicians got involved, government got involved, and it became policy to continue to try to make buying a house uh, more realistic more, for people. More accessible. Yeah, and so as a result, we've skewed and distorted the market so much that now this is what always happens: housing prices have gotten so expensive and so crazy that it's unachievable. And so they tried to remedy by pumping more money or by just trying to fix things. So what's happened now is so many people have their money tied up in their homes that it's it's political suicide to allow the market to correct, correct itself. Because if the housing market crashes, the average person is screwed. Mm -hmm. So now we're in this weird like, yeah, what's your, what do we do? What are your, th I have some thoughts around this. So I'm curious to what you, what do you think is, was going to happen? Or like, or do you think we have this massive crash ahead of us? Do you like, what do you, what, what's going to be the result of this? Oh man, I don't know. I think, I, I don't think it'll be like 2008. I think if this does go down, it'll go down because of the, uh, the labor market or the work market, um, really being affected. I'm not sure because people have a lot of equity in their houses and the, and they were locked in with such low rates that a lot of people will just weather the storm. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think we're going to see anything like that actually at all. I think that we are in uh, and this is, will be unique in our lifetime going through a major transition. I think the education around it is going to take probably a decade plus to even get to everybody else. I think the old adage of, you know, 
we buying a house, buying, buying a home a is yeah. is is gone. I, I agree. I think that it's gonna it's going to continue yeah, to stay snuffing people in out. control by a small percentage of people that can actually afford to play the game of owner mm-hmm. and and re- and then renting. To, and I think that it's just going to be different. That's not going to be part of the American dream anymore. Yeah. Part of the American dream is actually not going to be like own your own home and do, it's no. like it's going to be you know live where you want to have the freedom and flexibility do short term rentals like Airbnb Airbnb live here for a month go there for a month like remote work is everything's going, becoming renting everything yeah, is going in that right in with the the, the Klaus Schwab yeah statement. you will own right. nothing and be happy yeah I mean I I think that we are or we're living that I do not think I mean in hearing stats like that like like you have to mull that over a little bit like. Mm-hmm. We would need an 08 plus type of crash just to get back to like a 25 year yeah, average, just to bring it back, yeah. which I don't think anybody thinks that we're in for an 08 crash, even if we're going to see some things get turned up a little bit. Have or, you seen some of these World Health Organization like proposals for like new cities and what they look like? Like super ultra dense housing, these massive buildings with like 300 square foot, you know, living quarters for people. And I mean, they're trying to shift everything. And, yeah. and, and either they're doing it because they see the writing on the wall, so they want to change the perception, or that's just the direction they want to go because then they mean? will own everything. What do you mean? What are you seeing? What are- they talk about how the new cities, right, the f- cities of the future mm-hmm. uh, are going to be, and they, the way they sell it, of course, is it's better environment, it's climate friendly, da, da, da. but it's these like massively like super dense housing. So like buildings, so yeah. people aren't going to have a house with a yard. That's going to be like if you're super rich. Otherwise, everybody else is going to live in these buildings with these tiny 300 to 500 square foot rooms, communal living, right? They sell it as like this whatever. The thing. biggest project in the world is off and running now. What do you mean? The, of, of that. Exactly oh. that. It's the wall. Yeah. Or the, the line. The, the line. Yeah. The line. Where, was, where is that? It's, Saudi, it's Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Yeah, that's right. It's a multi, oh. multi trillion dollar project that has already broken ground and is being built. And it is literally that. It's this, the, they're building the entire, I mean, yeah. I forget how many miles it goes. It, ta- it would take with a, with a bullet train, it'll still take 20 to 30 minutes to get from one side to the other. Oh my God. Look at put, that. To put in perspective, yeah. So this is what it's looking like. Wow. Right? Yeah, it seems like they're they're building and shaping these like uh, so it's its own. It's like you you don't have to ever like leave. travel outside of ever. it. Leave like it, so sports, entertainment, grocery, everything like, is in walking distance, and so that's sort of like the selling point too to the carbon thing. And I've also seen one too that's like a um, it's supposed to be carbon neutral. I there's believe. a floating one, like a floating. Oh, I heard city you say that. That uh, it, it actually looks like a turtle yeah, <laughs> in so. the design, but it's like the whole thing. Yeah, just like this. These are like that goes way longer than that though. That's just a, that's just a piece. Like of how it much right money there. are they put pumping into trillions? This? Yeah. yeah, this is a, this is it is the 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 biggest architectural. Uh, you, you know what's crazy? Project in the world. You know what's crazy about uh, massive, massive, dense cities? I understand the rationale. I'm not like pro or against necessarily, except for sometimes the motives aren't great and, and the way they sell them can be lied, yeah. based on lies, I should say. But uh, massive, massive, close, tight um, societies are what have given us some of our biggest problems Friction. in modern societies. Like yeah. disease. Disease is a big problem in a place like that. Like imagine a what a, pandemic. what an interesting point that I actually didn't think about with that because I'm like yeah, super excited closed. about it. But like, right. yeah, imagine like that's why we don't have fur. You know that, right? That's the th- main theory why humans are naked monkeys because there's no other. First of all, you think to yourself, what is the evolutionary benefit of us being yeah. naked without fur? That makes no sense. That was and, the argument that we were aliens. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but yeah. <laughs> just had to go there. <laughs> but, but sorry to get you like off evolutionary track. speaking, it's stupid. Fur protects you, protects you from being you know attacked because it kind of is a buffer, keeps you warm. Like why the hell are we so naked? Yeah. And the main theory, which is largely uh, agreed upon, is that we started to develop larger and larger and larger communities. And uh, if having fur became a problem because of lice and mm-hmm. mites mm-hmm. and disease. Well, that's interesting because you do see like that, the chimpanzee or whatever that documentary is on um, Netflix, I've been watching it and just the process of how that's like a status thing. Like they go around and yeah. they pick the mites and, you know, and it's like, it's all political and the, like who they do it with and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it was an, imp- it's an important part of it. Otherwise, yeah, they're going to have, 
parasites. They're going to yeah. have diseases. They're going to have all these things if they don't get groomed. So what you have, we have with that, with like viruses, for example, is let's say that there's a, a virus in a community of 10. Okay. It passes through everybody and it's gone. That's it. You have it in a society of 10 million. It's going to mutate a bunch of times. It's going to circle around, turn into something different. And really it's going to feed off of just the amount of people that are there. So like these huge, like the bubonic plague killed so many people, but did it, it probably didn't hurt people living hmm. in like, you know, tribal communities because there's not a lot of people. It was the cities that had destroyed. Um, so it's different problems is, is, is the main thing. It's yeah. Really no, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated in it. There's like a really cool little mini documentary on the history channel. I think it's also up on YouTube, like where they it went through the whole process of like, they recruited, um, like the most talented, brilliant minds in, in architecture. Mm -hmm. And cause it's suppose I, what I can't figure out, even after the documentary, I couldn't wrap my brain around. Like if you have this thing, that's these, these huge vertical walls like that, how are you going to have all this like fresh greenery in inside there? Like to, it's, it's all greenhouse. Like, well, yeah. And you're in the desert. So it's like the, the climate there isn't like the most advantageous for like it's all climate. Control. Yeah. It's all climate control. It, it, honestly, it, it, my sci science fiction brain goes immediately into like, this is like kind of a, a prep preparation for interstellar stellar travel because it's like, everybody's going to be confined. And if we're to like ever have to leave, it's going to be like that. It would be just like that. And we would try our best to create, you know, some kind of environment where plants could grow. Yeah. And so we could still have some kind of sustainability. My conspiracy mind, uh, if I let that fly with this, looks at that and says, wow, what an easy way to control a lot of people. Yeah. That's what well, I that's think right away. Everybody living in the same building. Sure. Everything's controlled. Everything from the climate to the food, to the sure. information, to the whatever, like literally you'd have two buttons and you could make things yeah. happen. Everything's probably going to be under the same currency. It'll probably be digital. Well, I mean, I still, you remember I brought that yeah. up years ago now. Jeez. That, we'll uh, be the underground people. That yeah. the the future was going to be these, <laughs> ah, these, mini, our fist at them. these yeah. mini cities that are owned by massive companies like the Apples, the Googles, the Facebooks that build these mat and they've already kind of done like it their own country. These like little campuses. And I mean, right now Google is yeah. buying up half of down here. Like they're going to have half of all this stuff down here and they have this massive campus and soon they'll have their own kind of government ecosystem where it's you think like companies are going to go to war one day. Like Google versus Apple. No, I, here's, here's, so the, I, I've, again, I always like to try and be optimistic about it unless like, you know. I love it when you're optimistic about the conspiracies because the comments under YouTube go after. I know, so I know that people get hella pissed. Adam's, like this. Adam's head is in the sand. You know? I know, I know, I know. So. <laughs> we're, I, we're the ones saying crazy stuff. I know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be optimistic about it. Like, so well, okay, let your, let your free market brain go a little bit and be like, you know, imagine there's you know, these, these 10 different, you know, billionaires that decide they want to build their own little cities, their own so governments. So long as people are totally voluntary. That's what I mean. And, I and so it's like, Hey, you don't have to work for Google. Yeah. You don't have to work for Apple. You know, say you own Apple. I own Google. You know, you, you own Amazon and we all disagree politically and how things should be structured. And so, Hey, go build your fucking world. I'm going to build mine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if people want to live and I, as a, as a, as a, I think smart business operator would be like, I need to make this a place where people want to come live or mm -hmm. else they're going to go to you or someone else. So long as it's voluntary yeah. and it's not a backdoor way for government to control speech and movement and purchases and stuff like that. I don't care, but that's, I don't think any of those guys origin, origin, no, no, I'm, oh, I'm saying see. like, I don't think like the Zuckerbergs and Bezos and Musk and stuff like that, that I think most of them lean like libertarian. They did. Or they, at least they did right Originally. before. Not the, anymore. Yeah. Before what was the old Twitter owner's name again, Jack Dorsey. He, it, yeah, he, he was, he, he said all that. Yeah. Like it was literally how he started the company was trying to make it as free as possible. Totally. Yeah. So I think I, I, you know, I believe that that's the intent from most yeah. of these guys. The so. internet grew and exploded and self-organized itself with zero, almost zero direction or regulation from governments. And it advanced very yeah. quickly and it literally became what it is without, you know, top-down type control. Well, speaking of like long linear structures, the Great Wall in China, dude, have, have you saw this in the news? What? what happened? Like, so I guess there's um, these these two people were trying to make their uh, commute to work a little shorter. 
And so they decided to bore through <gasps> and basically cut through this giant chunk of the wall and, and have a road so they could cut through to get to work faster. Like ancient, ancient oh structure that they, they just so they must be like ruined. thrown in jail. Forever. Oh yeah, yeah. They they picked them up and 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 locked them up. Were they sure. successful though? Did they get yeah. through? Oh, they did. They did. Wow. They created like oh yeah. Doug pulled Give me a up. picture. Let me see. Let me see what this but looks like. It's Bro, that like, that is not so disheartening, man. Like that's history. Like. Too detained after leveling. Part yeah, of it looks like part of the wall that's kind of uh, crumbled, and you know, not not the entire walls are like in perfect shape. Sure, sure, yeah, sure. Just, but they just they but they, they kind of go of through it and uh, wow, destroy it. Yeah, irreversibly damaged. Ooh, I didn't know that some of the wall looked like that. I assumed it was like yeah, there's a lot of ruins. Looks, yeah, the wall. So I mean, there's a places you where know, you can where go. How many that, miles does it go? It's, oh, oh, it's you can see it's it from so space. Long. Yeah. It's so long. You don't know that? Yeah. I think it's the only man-made structure yeah. you can see from space, right? You think it's, you're right? <laughs> yeah. it's 13,171 miles, Whoa. which yeah. is 21,000 kilometers. That's Whoa. What, What's, yeah. what, boy, that would take uh, weeks to travel from one to the other side, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. I didn't yeah, realize one of the, it was- one of the most, I did uh, not realize it was that one, massive. One of the most insane, ambitious projects in, in human history. So where does uh -huh. it, where do, I'm, you know, I'm, ter I'm terrible with history, right? So where does it, where does it run from where to where? That's a good question. Is it, uh, is it completely a border? Or well, like, yeah, it was, I think, originally <laughs> designed to keep out invaders. I would yeah. imagine that's um, right. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly Which where it starts and where it, fin it finishes. I mean, outside of Beijing, you can actually go to part of the wall there and see it. You can type in, where, yeah, put put a, where does the Great Wall of Stein China start and stop? Mm -hmm. so I'm interested in that as well. Yeah. This was for the, this was really to stop the, the I mean, the Mongols were the biggest motivation, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, wow. Is that it right there? Okay. Yep. Wow. So it passes through Beijing. Yeah. Holy cow. So it stops right there. Yeah. So it's, it begins in the east. And I, I won't even try to say the names of these places. Oh, wait a second. Is I thought you spoke. Oh, no, wait, I, wait, wait. I don't Is speak all Chinese. of that red line or is it just what I see going to, like above North Korea to the that, that's the line okay just that line yeah, yeah, okay yeah, okay yeah. and it splits in a place yeah and it actually that. it actually surrounds an okay, area okay so hey, hold on what does that say right there in the uh, does it do you, can you get where it starts and where it stops is that what it says uh, yeah so again I'm not gonna I'm gonna butcher these the east at the Shanghai Guan in Hebei province and ends at Jiuai Guan in Gansu province in the west. So you did east to west. Good, Doug. He does. He, he said that really does. does. Sexy. He's their interpreter. Yeah. Hey, uh, yeah. what did you guys think? So I talked to this person. They annoyed the hell out of me because they don't, they don't tell, don't use my name. Don't use my picture. Fine. I won't. Okay. But I'm going to talk about it anyway. I'm just not going to say who it is. It's a family member. They you were can't using, use the before and after? No, it's annoying. You no, know what? I'm going to give you this guy's phone number. Are you kidding me? Yeah, no, he doesn't want it. So I'm going to give you his phone Fuck number. Fuck off, dude. <laughs> That's so annoying. I, I did not know that. Yeah. So I'm going to give you his phone number. You guys can razz him. But he used the... Bro, the before... Here, listen, I'm the, I'll say this. I was the most skeptical about yeah. this. And I'm like, whatever. I've also accepted that. I'm going to ask him if we could blur out his face. And you you yeah, people, do that. Yeah, we could do the that. The before and after... It's crazy. In this period of time... 30 days is 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 crazy and his yeah. hair and it i is. had no idea we weren't going to be able to share that that pisses me off his 30 days because i've been hella skeptical about this shit in the first place oh, i told you about it. his hair yeah. in a month yeah it's a substantial difference in that's how much some hair bullshit bro from Why using being like that i don't know he's just you know <laughs> i know it's so mad but I don't know if he's just, I don't know what the deal Bro, is. Bro, you're the leader of the family. You should fucking put your foot down yeah. about some well, shit like that. I think he's sensitive about his <laughs> we'll hair see. loss. Yeah. Is that but what it is? I think so. Blur but his that, face out. But the fact that he had so much hair regrowth, I would be like proud of yeah, that. Yeah, he'd be totally. pumped on that. Yeah, yeah nobody's going to be even looking at his face. You're going to see his hairline. Yeah, that is like it. completely well, radically it's, it's just, changed. I mean, he's just yeah. blown away. He's blown away that it worked as well as in 30 days. That's because awesome. remember, this, the peptides will take longer than 30 days to really have their full effect. What a prick. I hope he listens to this and he <laughs> Come on, bro. Seriously, like that's such a big, that's such a huge change. I like I, people are gonna want to see that. I, it's a big. It's deal. dramatic, yeah. and dude. it's one of your family members who you always are talking about the products that they I use. Know, it's like, bro, it's like the most crazy. Dramatic, before. though, yeah, right? No, it's big time. It's crazy how it's, big of a difference in yeah. thirty days. His hairline moved like four inches, to and, put and that, it like, filled in perspective, and it totally filled in yeah. from using the folatin. Yeah, it's right? all dark hair yeah. there now. It's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, it's from it's the Intera. So Intera has this product folatin. I've been using it too. I'm not gonna lie there's a little bit of me now that wants to try just try because it, 
that is such a big difference. It's a family member. I know the person is very, very well. Yeah, I know what they look like before. Uh-huh. I'm not like it's like this is like so, so even as much as I didn't even give a shit about it, like that's like, whoa, that's a lot, dude. I know, it's in crazy. a short period of time. Now they also have the skin cream that did you guys wives use those yeah or did you guys oh use yeah courtney's raving about it yeah so, so they call it liquid well, botox yeah because okay and i don't mean to put her on front street but yeah she's done botox before it's okay. like so the difference of it i'm like well is it really like move the needle at all with that and it's no she, she stopped kind of <laughs> yeah no, nice. no, no pun intended uh <laughs> nice have in terms of like the the regular uh, appointments that you schedule for that because mm-hmm. it's one of those things that it's you gotta temporary. Keep it you got to keep it up. So she's she's had to like book out even further out. Like so, has been able to kind of like um, not go as often. Not go as often. Phone. So it's yeah. got to be working. Oh well, I mean, I mean, I, you know, Jessica's been using it, and uh, it, she's like, "This is get me more. This is crazy stuff." You can actually feel it. By the way, have you guys tried it? I mean, I've I've tried it once. I can't say that. You didn't notice it. you felt something? It feels interesting. Like you put it on and then you can feel like your skin, it just feels different. I don't know. Mm. It's huh. interesting. Mm. Anyway, good stuff. So it works. And uh, if I get approval from this fucker, then we'll post his before and after, but I don't think he's going yeah, to. I feel like we can too. blur his face out. And didn't he that's do? what I'm going to propose. At least that, yeah. That's at what least. We'll call him Mr. X. Mr. Yeah. X. Mr. Yeah. X. Oh, shout out. You got a. Uh, I had something. What was anomaly? It? He has anom- oh yeah, listen. Anomaly so, on Twitter. He yeah. interviewed Vivek. Ramaswamy. Well, it's on his Instagram you also. Instagram too, it's on his yeah. Instagram also. His podcast is called Dream Rare. We've actually talked about him before. He's a, a libertarian guy and like really c- goes towards the conspiracy theory type stuff, but smart. I mean, and yeah. he goes ham on every like politician. Like what I like about him is he goes pretty deep yeah. on all of them, he, uh, both left and right. Like he's he not voices a, a lot of not a, he's not a Trump fan. He's not a Biden yeah. fan. He's like, and and Vivek is somebody that we've been following closely. We like his we like a lot of the things that he's saying. But then I've got even family on my side who's very skeptical of a lot of the, some of the things that he has said or that who he's tied to. And this is the toughest interview Vivek has done. Mm-hmm. He definitely yeah, hands down. asked him the hard. I even think that like he was he was a little, he, but yeah, he didn't soften anything. Nothing. It was all hard. It's a, so it's a great it's a great interview if you're at, if you're at all following the the, the uh, debates and things and, and curious about the candidates. Uh, and Vivek is one of the leaders on 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 the right. Uh, definitely worth uh, a watch. So shout out to Anomaly. Is that how you say yeah, it? Yeah, and then the, it's the zero instead of O. Yeah, so A-N-0-M-A-L-Y. Is, On X. Yeah. You got to check out Organifi's Performance Stack. There's two supplements you take together. It's pure uh, and peak performance. You get stimulants in the peak performance. Pure helps to round everything out. You have a very euphoric Feeling. It feels amazing pre-workout, before any kind of creative endeavor. I love it. So it's pure and peak power. That's the bundle, and they offer a discount. Plus, you get an additional discount with our code. This is with Organifi. They make some of the best supplements around. Check them out. Go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump and get 20% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Katie from California. Hi, Katie. How can we help you? Hey guys, what's up? Um, of course, I want to say thank you for sure. I've um, been listening to you guys for probably a couple of years now. My boyfriend turned me on to it. Um, he said to tell Justin, hey, so I have to get that in there, of course. Hey, guy. Um, but <laughs> I know you guys have a lot of calls to do, so I'll, I'll jump into it. Um, you tell yourself that. The question I put out there, because you guys have been talking about creatine a lot. Obviously, a lot of studies have been coming out about that um, and like all the benefits, but I'm going into like a jujitsu competition and like through a whole series of events, I've gained more weight than I used to compete at. So I want to drop back down a division. Um, So pretty much I'm 164 right now and October 21st is the competition. So I need to drop into the 155 and below. I do have to weigh in with my gi on like an hour before. So there is no, like you can do some crazy dehydration or anything like that. Right. So, um, because I especially want to go down to that division because otherwise it's 155 and up. So there could be like a 190 or 180 or something like that. And I'm like, (laughs) not super amped to do that, but I know creatine can like make you retain more water. So I'm just kind of curious your guys' thoughts on, so I definitely feel stronger with it when I've used it before. Um, but yeah, so yeah. Good question. So, all right, here's the deal with, with trying to make weight for, 
sporting events. Um, and and jujitsu tournaments do a good job of this. They have you weigh in right before your match. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they do this is people play a lot of games to try to get into lighter weight classes and then they'll, they'll add the water back in. They'll go into the weight class, you know, 15 pounds heavier than, than where they weighed maybe the day before or two days before. But here's, here's my strong belief with, with weight classes. I think you should go and be as healthy and fit as possible wherever you weigh, you weigh. Your best performance will be where you feel the best. When, when we try to game the weight classes by, oh, I'm going to try and go in and be smaller. And look, you've done, how long have you been in jujitsu, Katie? Almost four years. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So you've been doing it for a while. Are you, are you competing as, as blue or purple? Uh, blue. So I want to get some tournaments in like before the end of the year. Cause my coach wants to promote me at the end of the year. And I'm like, yeah. Mm, so yeah, look, you know that. Okay. Then you know <laughs> this, you know that there's some really dangerous 150 pound girls or hundred pound girls. And totally. then there's, you know, 190 pound chicks that you can, you're going to, you know, get behind them and choke them out real easy. So, okay. uh, Absolutely. now that's not to say weight doesn't make a difference, but when you're talking about women, it's going to be rare that you're going to fight a 180 pound, like muscular chick. Now I know that there's some, there are some that are like that, but it's pretty rare. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Really focus on being fit and healthy. Now here's why I think you shouldn't stop taking creatine. The weight you might gain from it is going to be about three pounds. It's not that much. It's almost, okay. it's inconsequential, but as you try, as you get leaner, if that's what makes you feel more fit and healthy leading into this tournament, creatine is going to help you hold on to muscle. It's also going to give you better recovery. So I don't think that that's something that is going to make that big of a difference. Um, and in fact, might actually hamper or hinder mm -hmm. your performance. So I wouldn't worry too much about trying to, you know, shave three pounds off your body weight for a tournament that's in October. I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. No, I think that the move would be, even if you we were to manipulate a little bit of that, the move would still be to use creatine the whole, the whole entire time. And then like the week before the competition, I'd just say, hey, cut it out. If we were like, let's say three pounds over water weight heading into that. But even then it's going to be, it's going to be so, the, the difference of you making that weight class is not going to be made in that week, let's say. It's going to be done on all of your yeah. dieting, training, leading up, and creatine is only going to help you get your results better. And so I would I would use it. And I think, you'll, I think you're going to be totally yeah. fine. The absolute worst thing you could do, and some people do this, is they, they the week before, they're like, yeah. oh my God, I have to drop five pounds. <clears throat> And so then they do everything they can to drop five pounds. And look, leading up to a tournament, you're training at max. You're probably already dancing on the borderline of overtraining. You're yeah. probably already, mm -hmm. uh, you know, taking care of some kind of nagging injuries. I don't know any jujitsu competitor that goes into a tournament with some kind of mild injury. One of the worst things you do is try to cut weight a week before a tournament uh, when you're in that state. You're going to make yourself yeah. potentially sick or overtrained or injured. So, you know, that's just, uh, you want to be as consistent as possible. Yeah. I completely agree. And it's one of those things too. Like you want to, you want to lose weight. Uh, like some people wait till like the last two weeks or so to really like crash into it and not, not performing with that weight and not, not being at that energy. And so all of those things factor in when you're going to your performance that, uh, you know, if you, if you haven't simulated that beforehand. So if you are wanting to kind of move into a lower weight class, I would do that before even signing up for, you know, a tournament. So that way you're, you're real comfortable, uh, you know, with, with that body weight and that, uh, uh, you, that feel of your your body first. You guys, you guys are reading her numbers too, right? Yeah, you're five pounds off, right? If she wants to do 155. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. October what? 21st. Yeah. Which yeah. one is this? By is this the is this the? Um, are are you coming up here to San Jose? No, it'll be in San Diego. So it's the Jiu Jitsu World League. So it'll be okay. at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah I mean, five yeah. pounds you could totally do by October second. Um, it's not that, not that big of a deal and it'd be a healthy cut. What I would do is literally, I wouldn't aggressively aim for a cut. I would just, uh, try to eat healthy, clean, train, try to stay healthy, you know, try yeah, to stay not, away from overtraining at all. And you may, you, you'll probably drop that anyway with the additional training. So, okay. I, I do want to mention what I was talking about though. Like, so are you against her potentially doing something like this since she's like five pounds, right? So she doesn't need to yeah. do an aggressive cut. You just, you know, tighten up the diet a little bit, keep your training intensity volume up there. You're probably going to lean out heading right into the competition or getting close to the competition. Uh, use creatine. It's only going to benefit your training and building muscle and hanging on to muscle during this process. Uh, let's pretend she is, though, like a pound over. 
going into her final week? Would you say, oh, just cut the, the creatine out for that final week? Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're a pound over, but a pound is like, I mean, that could go up or down. I know, but I'm just saying like that. So, yeah. so that, so that was my point is like, I would use creatine the entire time. If you're heading into the final week or so, and you're literally off a pound to three pounds, it might not hurt. Here, to here's why I don't like to say that. Cause what'll happen, what often happens when people think that they can do that is then they go in so close because yeah. they have this thing in their back pocket. If you're if you go into the tournament a pound away, you've already mis made a mistake. No, so my so if you were my client, the goal would be to get down to 150, knowing that we could be 155. That's we it. have plenty of time to get to 150. 10 pounds over the next month and a half is plenty of time for us to do that. Healthy, yeah. slowly controlled. The goal would be to get there. But I'm just saying that if that was the goal, we're in that process. It's she's 156. Yeah. We're in the final week. Yeah. I would just pull the creatine. I would. Yeah. So, I mean, and by the way, too, during this process, I would keep your water and sodium levels up high, too, which mm -hmm. is also going to be holding mm -hmm. extra water, which I could easily, if I were pushing, let's say, two packets of Element, I've got you at a gallon, gallon and a half of water. Oh, this is, don't forget, though, this is right, this is like the day of the tournament. If she messes with sodium and then competes and it messes up her performance, won't be a good, you know, so I don't know about the water sodium thing i'd want to keep her as hydrated as possible that, i'm saying high that's what i'm saying i'm going so high that if i were to bring her down to where she probably is now she would see a difference in the water weight yeah. also yeah. so but i mean at the end of the day i think the thing that we're, i think we all agree on is you have plenty of time right now to pull easily re reduce five pounds of body fat without doing anything extreme also utilizing creatine all the way yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah awesome you had a second part of this question about training um, oh yeah. Just like, so I don't overtrain. Yeah. Um, so I typically go probably about like four hours of jujitsu and then hopefully catch like an open mat on the weekend. Cause like on Mondays we have two back to back classes and I'll go two other days and I really like to get in and lift, but I didn't know like how many, cause like I had a back injury and every time I can go deadlift, my core feels solid for the week. Anytime I don't go deadlift, like I don't like my back starts to hurt. So I like to keep that in there, but like when I'm, I don't know, like what would be the right way to train so that I'm not necessarily building muscle, but like keeping the muscle, um, well, you're, and not overtraining. You're like, a, you're, you're like, uh, about, a, I mean, a little over a month out from the tournament mm -hmm. right now, right. all your training should be geared around staying healthy. Don't worry about okay. performance or strength. So when you go to the gym, think to yourself, what's going to feel good. Don't think I'm going to like improve my performance. All your focus right now should be on uh, the jujitsu, like rolling and sparring with your partners. If this was like four months out, then I would we would be focused on like strength training a little bit. But right now, it's only a month out. It's just supplemental at this point. We got to keep you from getting hurt yeah. is the main thing. Are you training her one time a week, full full would, body strength yeah. training? Right now, max. And I would go in like one, yeah. yeah, easy, moderate intensity. I wouldn't even go high intensity. A, right a generic way to do that, like I, this is an example. So I would do one day, this is me, one day a week of training and then like a lot of tempo stuff because that will force me to keep the weight down, right? So you can modify your intensity. One of the ways to do that would be if I know I can, let's say you can yeah, deadlift. Or unilateral training. I know you can do deadlifting at 200 pounds. Like I'm going to put you at 130, 140 and slow the tempo down and make it real controlled. Like that's something that I would do to keep you from wanting to push a weight that you think you can get up to. It's like, that's not the, that's not the priority right now. It's to bulletproof your body. A great way to mess with tempo right now would be to slow down the repetition, isometric stuff, unilateral work, like Justin just said. Like yeah. that's what I'm doing right now. Another thing too, Katie, is uh, ask your coach. Uh, you know what your game is, right? You've, by this point, four years into jujitsu, you've probably kind of developed a style. Uh, yeah. And I would ask your coach, and and also ask yourself: Do you do better with opponents that like to put weight and pressure on you? Do you like to play the bottom game better, the top game? Cause uh, some, <laughs> so, okay. So if you're a top game fighter, I can see why you want to go in the lighter uh, division then because going heavier is going to be a little harder for you. So that yeah. makes sense then. Okay, cool. Right. Um, thanks guys. That's awesome. You got it. Um, cool. really appreciate it. You got it. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. Good luck to you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. The whole like making weight thing, people put so much emphasis on it because this is what the pros do and yeah. they know what they're doing. And even then they screw up half the time. The best thing you should do when you comp when you compete in any event that's weight class is go in as healthy as possible. Yeah, I didn't know that. I like that they do that. They just weigh day up. on purpose. Yeah, well, because they used to have because they do play games all the time. People, people would get they would dehydrate, them, do crazy shit, and then people have died doing crazy shit. Like isn't it? Isn't that kind of? I, I would love to see the stats on this. Even at the professional level, don't they find that athletes that 
keep their weight relatively close to what their competing weight is, have some of the most success. Yeah. I know there's some examples in their body. It's yeah. Like, I know there's some examples of some fighters that are like, like famous for this, right? Where they yeah. cut like 30 pounds and then they blow back up 15 right before the, the, the yeah, fight. I, I, I think, but they, for the most part, I think some of the most consistently successful, even professional fighters are like, do a good job of keeping themselves close to the weight that they were. I read a, a study, or I think it was an article that said that about 10 pounds is where you want to, maybe 10 pounds within your or fluctuation. Yeah, where you yeah. could drop 10 pounds of water 24 hours yeah, before and gain it back. Sense. More than that, you start to mess up your performance. You know, I had a friend who dropped 20 pounds of water the day before. Oh my God. And yeah. And he went in and it, it, he was trying just, to like IV it back in. The, you do all kinds of shit and you yeah, just, you just, just feel like dog not shit the, same. the yeah. day of, you know? Yeah. And I mean, they literally, he was trying to, his, his training partners locked him in the sauna. wouldn't let him out. Oh my like God. 20 pounds is too much. I think, you know, but these are pros. They have people monitoring them. Yeah. I wouldn't do this at, at, at any other level. No way. Our next caller is Colin from Idaho. Colin, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, not much, guys. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. I promised my wife I wouldn't fangirl it, so I'll just say uh, I'm excited to be on. Love the show, and I love the consistent advice you guys are always giving. It's uh, done a lot for me over the last couple of years, so thank you. Thank you. Thank right. you man. Thanks, man. Um, so I love working out. I love it specifically for the aspect in, in that it translates so well into real life. Yeah, yeah. Just just a bit of background. Uh, I, I love working out. I love the translation that working out uh, takes into real life. Uh, but I also do a lot of, of hunting, backpacking, uh, long trips into deep country with heavy loads on my back. So I, I also love the intense aspect um, of, of training. So my, my question for you guys is, uh, it, I, I'm trying to avoid getting the big, bulky muscle uh, kind of hypertrophy look. I, I'm not really interested in round, large muscle. I'm I'm primarily interested in in uh, just being powerful, being a, a bit smaller, having a lot of endurance. M my question is, how can I train for power and endurance and, and kind of avoid, I guess, the training that that will give me those big bulky muscles? Uh, what's the best way to go about that? Yeah, you're, cycles. Yeah, well, yeah, you're, you're also overthinking it. Yeah, yeah. all those rep ranges contribute to everything. He's gone. And just answer the question, and yep. we're we're basically done with this. Yeah, yeah. All those rep ranges contribute uh, to to what you're looking for, um, and hypertrophy helps with all of that. Really, it's a diet thing. That's where you're going to control that. Most of that is going to be the 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 calories that you eat, and whether or not you're in a surplus or a deficit. But you want to train all the different rep ranges for performance, and the exercises you pick are going to play a bigger role in the functionality of the strength that you build uh, versus just the look. I mean, when I hear a question like this, I think right away the motivation behind how we wrote Math Performance. Mm -hmm. you, that, that's literally what this is. Like, Math Performance is not the program you follow to try and look like a, a bodybuilder and build big, bulky muscle. It's like you want to have muscles that can perform. And the most important piece of that when, you, when you're training, because like you said, Sal, everything obviously contributes to those things, but you just phase it. Yeah. So you actually have a phase where you put emphasis on endurance and stamina yeah. that, and you're not really worried that you might lose five or 10 pounds on the scale because you're building endurance and stamina. So it would really just be phasing your training very similar to how maps performance. Yeah. Is just out. the mouth to your nutrition. I mean, at the end of the day, because like if in terms of getting, gaining size, because, uh, it, it what he's desiring and what he's going after, like to get that kind of fast twitch response movement. I mean, there's specific training for that, no doubt. So that's going to be sort of your hub. You're going to come back to that, um, but you're going to cycle in hypertrophy style training and you're going to cycle in these other, you know, methods that also build and grow muscles. Uh, however, you know, it's not, it, it's not that all of a sudden you're just doing hypertrophy, like your muscles are going to balloon out, you know? It, it I wish. Really, yeah, I know. <laughs> I was I mean, like, <laughs> that, again, so it's not funny because that's, kind of like the misconception like women have 100%. Bulky. 100%. Bulky. look we, we lost them good i'd love to yeah. ask him questions about his genetics and his response because to ask a question like this colin you better be top 0.1 percent of muscle building where you were where you're walking around and you're just jacked on accident yeah otherwise it's a silly question it's like building big round bulky yeah. muscles is hard <laughs> it, it, it yeah. never <laughs> happens on accident it doesn't happen because you accidentally trained in the hypertrophy uh, range, really for for performance, 
It's going to be the kind of exercises you do, the workout programming. And then when it comes to body weight, it's your, it's your diet. So obviously, okay, so obviously we know it, it, it's on diet. So what is a generic answer? Obviously, we also know too that would be very individualized. But if we were giving uh, mass advice, is it look like a primarily caloric maintenance most of the time with a slight surplus? Mm -hmm. Does it look like a calorie maintenance versus and some deficits a lot of times like what is the what is the general uh it's up and down undulating yeah for the most part yeah it's right? enough of a surplus to fuel hard workouts and yeah uh deficits when the activity drops a little bit it's that's all you're just playing that balancing out. i mean would you consider that i mean that's not a bad strategy to undulate it like even weekly where you're like you're in a slight surplus for training days and then on off days you totally you, yeah. you live in a deficit I would do totally. that. that's yeah. how and i it, train a lot and uh yeah and, it, and uh, oh he's back can you hear us colin yeah i can hear you sorry i've been in and out i apologize no worries no yeah. worries. you can listen to this later you just answered the we gave thing. you a great no, answer no. Yeah. Yeah. we actually told you the secret <laughs> yeah. uh, but I'm, listen, sure I'm sure you did here at the end call because we'll, we'll you'll be able to replay this and, and we did kind of go over everything uh, you know i do want to ask you a question now that i have your line on the line are sure. do you how, how tall are you how much do you weigh uh 510 200 pounds Okay, so you're pretty muscular. Do you just build muscle on accident? Are you just like the super jack naturally guy or what? <laughs> I, I've always been very strong. I, I think the reason I'm not into the big bulky look is because I, I feel kind of short. Um, and so I, I want to carry a lot of strength and power, but I don't want to stack it onto a, a relatively short body, I Got guess. It. Yeah, but that doesn't answer the question. So the question I'm asking is, are you the kind of guy like you, have you always been like, super genetically gifted like could you be a bodybuilder on accident if you, you try you touch weights and you just respond immediately oh it, it in weight incredibly fast i can put on weight i can lose weight incredibly fast i don't know if i could without trying become a bodybuilder but i can very quickly manipulate my body uh, grow my legs uh, grow my arms if i if i zone in on okay. something yeah so the answer we gave earlier really had to revolve around diet and just functional training but I wouldn't skip any specific type of rep range because you're going to lose performance. Do you have MAPS performance? Uh, I do not. Okay, we're that, going to oh, yeah, send get you that. That's the programming. So that's yeah. the programming. Totally. And the, the short answer, since you probably missed what we said, is follow-up programming like MAPS performance, undulate your calories. So have some days when you're in a surplus, have some days when you're in a deficit. That'll do it. We'll, I would most likely feed you when you're doing high performance days. So when you're your working, hard working days, yeah, your foundational days, I would I'd have you in a calorie surplus so you have a lot of energy for your workouts. Your mobility days and off days put you in a calorie deficit. That'll keep your weight down, keep you lean, but then also keep you really strong and feel yeah. for those workouts. Okay, and you don't think big bulky muscles will slow me down at all when I'm trying to perform in these different activities no not unless you're training uh it, like uh it, you just look, maintain the skill of the if, fast if, movement yeah like like there can be someone can be very big and very muscular but extremely functional someone else can be very big and, and, and muscular not very functional it's really about how you train those muscles and how you move mm -hmm. it's not necessarily about the muscles themselves now of course you know we, we look at bodybuilders as this example but that's extreme yeah that's extreme. You know, if you build big muscles by training functional, they're going to be functional. Well, and yeah. a lot of times, you know, they've cut out a lot of those athletic type movements. And really, that's what it is, is you're not simultaneously training for both, which a lot of athletes, yeah. like you look at these specimens that are athletes, like they've been, you know, they're, they're big and jacked, but they can move and be very explosive and move very fast. And so you have to maintain that, that amount of skill That's simultaneous it. to your training. Is all, if you follow math performance, the way it's laid out, you'll be fine. It, you'll be fine. And you just in, you interrupt the training every once in a while with some low calorie days to make sure you don't put on excessive weight. But even the weight you would put on from that program, to the guy's point, is going to be functional performance weight. It's going to be good muscle that's going to work the way you want to. And if it's not, then just go on a cut for a little while. That's yep, it. I that's mean, it. follow that to a T. Perfect. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much. All, All right, right bro. Thanks yeah, for calling in, man. Hey, have a good one, guys. Thanks. You too. Look, uh, the thing people need to understand is that exercise is a skill. Athletic performance is a skill. It's all skills. Mm -hmm. So when, you look, when people look at bodybuilders – and they say, oh, they're not good athletes. They're training for a different sport, That's the sport yeah. of bodybuilding. When you, see a body, when you see a bodybuilder in the gym, they're very good at the exercises that they perform. Yeah. But that's what they're training. They're, they're not training running. They're not training you know, rotation, explosive movement. They're not yep. throwing a basketball or football or baseball. So they're not going to have those skills just like the guy on the street who doesn't have those skills. Training those skills and training to have skills, well, that's, the, that's what you're going to adapt to. And that's what's going to make it's you. It's what you prioritize. That's it. At the end of the day, hundred percent. 
Our next caller is Carl Dean from Tennessee. Carl Dean, how can we help you? Is that your that's not your home setup, is it? It is, yes. What? Oh, Holy cow. God. <laughs> Sick Jim. This, this was our COVID project. We spent our vacation what? money Come on. in 2020 building a home gym. So. Can I get a little can I get a little a little camera turn there? Can I see the whole thing? That thing looks awesome. That is wow. sick. What the hell? You can charge membership fees. Look, he's got a TV up <laughs> down at the top, too. That is badass. Yeah, that's awesome. Wow. <laughs> All right. Super, Thank you. Super yeah. gym envy going on over here. Yeah. Well, how can we help you? What's, what's your question? So thank you guys for uh, taking my call. Um, and I know I sent in quite a bit of detail in my question. So I'm just going to read an abbreviation, abbreviated version of what I sent in. And then you guys can prompt me for any more details that are needed. So um, I started back weight training in 2020 during COVID. Um, and since then, I've noticed a big disparity in being able to reach behind my back with my right arm versus my left. So I can re easily reach behind my back and like touch my right shoulder with my left hand. Um, but I can only reach about midway behind my back with my right hand. Uh, so at first, this was primarily due to stiffness in the shoulder, but it's becoming increasingly painful in the front of my shoulder over the last four to six months. Um, and I have some mild pain on certain lifts, uh, but it does seem to be manageable as long as I don't apply too much intensity. Um, so I've also been battling some medial epicondyle pain, so kind of the golfer's elbow type of thing yeah. in that right elbow as well for the last three years. And so I now suspect that that may be related to my shoulder mm -hmm. uh, pain as well. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing the stick, uh, the mobility stick dislocates um, as a priming exercise at every workout. Um, but I'm not sure that that's actually the best thing and what I should be doing for this or if there's maybe other things I should be doing. Um, and at this point, I'm also wondering if I should consider like BPC 157. Um, but I did hear on one of your podcasts, I think it was probably the most recent ep episode with Dr. Seeds, that the problem will come back if it's an issue that's caused by a poor movement pattern. Yep. Yep. Um, so my question is, which exercises from MAPS Prime and MAPS Prime Pro would you recommend for this front shoulder pain that happens when reaching behind my back? Um, or is there something else you would recommend? Real, real quick. Great question. Well, they, yeah, can no. you point to very, very exactly where it hurts? Can you point to exactly where it hurts? Right here. Uh, so is it where your collarbone, is it where the, the AC joint is? Do you yeah. know where the collarbone meets the shoulder? Can you, yep. can you palpate it? Like if you yeah, push on it, does it hurt right there? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it's yes. not where the bicep, yeah, that's your okay. AC joint. Okay. So I want you to look up uh, AC joint rehab uh, movements because you might okay. have some inflammation or maybe, even a, did you have an injury? Did you actually hurt it or is it just over time? Um, so it really just started coming on over time. Um, I, I did have an accident, um, a horseback riding accident back in July, fell off um, and actually landed on that same shoulder. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it got worse um, after that accident. But now that is 95% plus recovered. Um, and so it's really back to the baseline of kind of where it was before that accident happened. You should separate it a little bit. Yeah. You're, so you're pointing to your acromio, uh, acromia, cl clavicular joint, the AC joint, so where the the um, the clavicle meets the shoulder. And so there might be some, here's what happens with poor recruitment patterns. You get some pain, your recruitment patterns change. And so now the way you move is causing issues in other areas like your elbow. Mm -hmm. So this would be something I would work with a movement specialist over. Now there's lots of mobility movements you can do. The problem is I can't watch you do them. And so you might perform them in a way to where they're not going to be necessarily uh, beneficial. Which is, by the way, yeah. why uh, doing shoulder dislocates may not really be improving for you is like you may not even recognize it. But every time you go over your the side that you have pain in is moving differently than it should be to help you. And so you're not really getting a lot of maybe relief, maybe warms up a little bit. But to Sal's point, if I can't be there to kind of correct when I see it, like, oh, see that right there, how we're elevating? I need you to press that while we do we that. We need to be able to spot the compensations as they occur. So that way, yeah, we could make those little micro adjustments in the way that you're um, bracing and holding your body and making sure it's like uh, actually benefiting your shoulder. Yeah, you're probably, so I'm assuming bench press probably hurts it the most. Um, or also bent over rows. Bent over rows. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your shoulder's hmm. probably coming forward when you're rolling. Yeah. When you're rowing. Yeah. forward shoulder. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I would work on uh, in prime pro scapular. So there's two sections for the shoulder. 
There's like shoulder movements and then scapular movements, I believe. Yeah. Or uh -huh. circles. I would work right on scapular there. movements. I would also work with a movement specialist or a physical therapist and let them know I have AC joint pain. They'll do further assessments to identify what's going on because it's going to be a little bit more uh, specific and specialized. But I, I really think that yeah. three to five sessions with a specialist will give you enough direction yep. to like, yep. so you, it's not like you need to make a crazy totally. investment and yep. have one with you forever. Just, it would be just you like just paying one of us it. to be there with you to kind of go through and go, oh, okay, this is what we need. Here's the few things I need you to do. You seem like the type of person that would be disciplined to follow through on it. Like that, it'd be worth the investment to go see someone. Yeah three to five times and then have them do a little bit of work on you, show you what you show you how you need to move when you're doing these exercises. And then you, and then you'll probably be all right. As long yeah. as you stick to now, it. Now BPC uh, would definitely help. Um, but I would, you still need to do the do it in conjunction movement with. and rehab. Yeah. So BPC is good for healing. Yeah. Um, it's not like a cortisone shot where you just reduce inflammation. It'll speed up the process. If you combine that with the rehab, it should help quite a bit. Okay. So is this something that I need to go like to my general practitioner and ask for no. a recommendation to a physical therapist or is this something Lana I can, involved in well, how, so how do I get in touch you, with the you, right are, type of yeah, person? Yeah. Are you in our private forum? I am. Uh, yes. Dr. Okay. Brink would so, be great, yeah, yeah. So I want you to tag uh, Dr. Justin Brink and ask him for a referral. I bet he's got somebody who he'll know who to reach out to out there better than even we will. Yeah. yeah. And then, so, and then the, the BPC, you're, he, it's unlikely. He also, by the way, might be able to give you some video consultation that might be he good for enough. for sure will. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you can work he with can him. Do some yeah, Skype. Yeah, so. He's the best. And now, the, uh, the BPC, I, it's unlikely your general practitioner will even know what it is. But you do. there are doctors that do work with peptides. So you can go to mphormones.com and uh, consult with them, and they'll set you up with a doctor. Uh, for the BPC. But definitely do this. Okay. The movement specialist is like you said, you That's hit it already. Everything. Like that, if you don't address the root cause, it'll, it's just like putting a band aid on it, but yeah. it will help while you're doing it. But make sure, I, and Brink's okay. in there. So he'll, he might even be able to just to be able to do this video with you. Yep. So, oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah. You're on the right track, though. You're yeah. going gonna to be good. And you got an amazing gym. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So Thank you. So my husband did most of this work by hand himself. So wow. um, he'll be very, wow. very pleased to hear that. I mean, it's wow. gorgeous. It's wow. a gorgeous gym. Yeah. Is, is, he a con you. is he a contractor? Is that what he does for a living? Is he is he in the space? He's a, uh, yeah, he's electrical. Uh, okay. okay. Wow. But yeah, he, he's in the space. So yeah, that's Handy awesome. Guy. Well, tell him great job. Yeah. yeah, very nice job. All right. I will. And hey, guys, if I can just uh, share with you a quick, uh, a quick thank you. So um, you know, I hear you guys talk a lot about how sometimes it feels like, you know, you're fighting the good fight, but it's a struggle getting the message out there. Um, just wanted you to know your message is getting through. Um, I first found you guys. I heard Sal a couple of times on Mike Matthews. The second time was actually his interview about the resistance training revolution. Um, so I immediately went out and pre-ordered it from Audible. Um, and from there on, I was hooked. Um, and so thanks to you guys, my 18 year old son is now running a version of anabolic. Um, he's a regular listener. Last year he did his school entrepreneurship, um, case study on mind pump. Oh, uh, so right. you guys are reaching the next generation. Uh -huh. So wow. the, the, oh, the kids so out awesome. there that can make a difference, you're, you're getting them. That's oh, awesome. That's, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. All right. Tell thank you so much guys. Appreciate it. Look yeah, for yeah. you, uh, in the private forum. Yeah. Yep. Thank right. you, Carl. Thank you. I'm jealous. That's a great wow. job. Yeah. I love Super when cool. I love when clients are like this detailed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like she sent it for the I don't know if we will put this on the YouTube or not, but she, she sent, sent picture. like pictures of right where the pain is. Oh, She's yeah. showing us like what she can yeah. do on her right versus yeah, her left. Yeah, because had I not seen that, I would have thought bicep tendon uh inflammation when yeah. people say front and shoulder. Uh -huh. You know, but that's the AC. I had AC joint separation. Yeah, I was say, I, that happened to you, huh? I did uh the you know, the whole cortisone shot, didn't listen. Oh, you did the trained. cortisone shot? Well, yeah, and that's why I had to get it resected. They had to go in surgically. So now my left shoulder is never gonna be as stable as my right because I don't have an AC joint on Dang. that side. I mean, it's a common one. It's common in uh, football because they hit with their shoulder. Yeah, soccer. Well, isn't like if you fall on bikes too, a lot of times like you get that dislocation yeah. quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's totally what happened though. She fell off her horse and that's what happened, yeah. right? I mean, it's yeah. almost certain that that's, that was the injury. She healed from it, so she thought she was better, but it forever changed her recruitment pattern. Yep. And so now she just needs to work on yeah, that. Totally. But before she does all these shoulder cars and like, you know, yep. controlled articular rotations, it's it's important that can she you, knows. Can you do handcuff with rotations or is that is that- no, I can you can yeah but i noticed my left i mean i made up a lot be a great of the stabilization too. because of you know i've built strength and stuff around it. but i can tell i can tell when i move in certain ways that it's like 95 percent. i don't think it'll ever get to 100 percent
Our next caller is Spencer from Canada. Hey, Spencer. How can we help you? Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. So I guess uh, my main question here is related to barefoot lifting. I know you guys talked about it in a few previous episodes, but I'm just wondering if there's ever a point where barefoot lifting could be bad for the ankles and feet if you were to lift enough weight. So to give you a bit of background, I've been lifting for almost 10 years since I was about 13. I'm 22 now. And I, for the past six or seven years, I've only lifted barefoot for legs and stuff. And uh, I'm just wondering if deadlifts in like the 400s and 500s for, well, I'm not that big. I'm about 5'5", five, five, weigh about 130 pounds. And I want to get up to a 405 deadlift. And I don't use any belts or any other gear, but I'm just wondering if like eventually it gets to a point where it's too much weight for the feet and ankles or if wearing shoes would be better for that kind of stuff. No, it's not, a, if you do, uh, not if you do it's it. It's not giving you that much support. No. It's, it's like this. Look, I'll, let me reword the question so you can understand what it sounds like, right? It's like, okay, hey guys, I love to do heavy barbell rows. Is there going to be a weight that I'm going to use that's going to be too much and maybe hurt my hands? Or is there a weight that's going to be too much that's going to hurt my shoulder? Th there's always potential weak links and you can lift beyond the weak link and hurt yourself, but there's nothing unique about the feet or the ankles where we need to be specially scared of training them. The, the, the reason why this can be an issue with people is because they always wear yeah. shoes and they always train a particular way. But uh, no, I mean, you can lift too heavy for your back or for your shoulder or for your pec too. As long as you train properly, you're totally fine. The only difference would be if you were to wear shoes the whole time and all of a sudden now you want to yes. get into barefoot lifting yes. and lift heavy and on top of that not have that stable support system you've built through the strength of your feet. So you've already, sounds like you've been training this way for quite a long time. So I don't yeah. see any. I was, I was also just wondering, because this isn't quite related to it. The last, I haven't tried any heavy singles on squats and deadlifts in many months, but a while ago, like the past two times I got to the end of strength phases, I ended up hurting my right foot. One time was I fractured it break dancing. And then the second time is I was trail running and I sprained my ankle. So they weren't related to lifting at all, but okay. because I hurt the ankle or the foot, I couldn't go for like the heavy maxes anymore. And then that started to make me wonder. I wonder if like there's a point where lifting barefoot is too much but like you said it sounds like no no that's no, not really no. if any, have you really noticed any compensations or anything like have you done any sort of unilateral training for a bit to kind of see if there's maybe some underlying compensations you have because of those injuries uh i found the the fractured foot that recovered pretty well that was more just like foot hitting the ground too much the sprained ankle is I am still like slowly going through that now, but I do quite a bit of single leg stuff anyways. Like I find most of my single leg lifts are actually like a lot better than what I would expect compared to my strength on bilateral exercises. So mm. I don't think there's really too much of an issue there. It was just an unfortunate like <laughs> rock on the trail and stuff like that, that okay. sent the ankle off. No, no, sounds I mean, fine to me. Injuries, injuries happen when uh, we we move beyond our capacity to stabilize and support what we're doing, and that can happen in any part of your body, feet, ankles, back. Could happen in your knee. Could happen in any moving part. So there's nothing specific or special about the foot or ankle where we need to be very careful. It's just that people always train with their they always wear shoes all the time, and so that's when it can become a problem. It's like if you always lifted with a belt. Then you took the belt off, you would have a in in like an instability in your low back and core because uh, you've always relied on a belt. So, and the truth is, yeah, even, no, that makes a lot of sense. Even though you rolled your ankle and have injured yourself doing other things, uh, it probably you probably had less of an injury because of the fact that you've gotten stronger feet and ankles than the average person. Mm -hmm. So, oh yeah, yeah, no, I I know other people who rolled their ankles on steps and. They ended up tearing ligaments and stuff. I was yeah. I was going pretty fast down the mountain, and I ended up just walking back down. I didn't even think it was that bad. Like I, yeah. none of none of my injuries have been too mm -hmm. severe, considering. Yeah, you're doing the right thing, bro. Yeah. So that yeah, that's all great. And also, I just want to say thanks, so you three. I'm actually a personal trainer. Went into it mainly because of you guys, and uh, been doing that for a couple of years now. Now I have my own studio as well, and you guys are really what inspired me to get into personal training in the first place. Hell yeah. That's awesome, rad, man. man. Good job. 
Is that a Bob Ross painting behind you? <laughs> By chance? Bob Ross? Yeah. Uh, this is, I don't know. He's probably too young for Bob Ross, but even okay. though that is. That's, <laughs> that's, okay. that's Pete Black. Yeah. 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 When, we're, when we're done, you can, yeah, Google, good. you can Google Bob Ross and see what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know Bob Ross. Uh, okay. He's been in memes that I've seen at least. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. You got <laughs> yeah, it. The yeah. memes still keep him alive. Yeah. Good. Okay. Awesome. All well, right, thanks for calling in, man. Yeah. Thanks so much. See you, buddy. All right, buddy. This is no different than the, um, we used to get this a lot back in the day, maybe not so much anymore, but I would get people who are like, oh, you lift weights? Well, you should need to wear a belt. If you don't wear a belt, you're going to hurt yourself. Um, there's nothing particular about a particular or special about particular parts of the body. It's just, yeah. there are weak links. And if you train beyond the capacity of that weak link, then the injury uh, potential goes right. up. You'll well, know that limitation right away. That's right. I what mean, you- Justin brought up the one good point though. I think that, and I remember, even though it's not common, I would see someone do this like with the maybe deadlifting or squatting but i do remember when like the whole barefoot thing got really popular and all of a sudden you'd have somebody who's never yeah, people went from zero to 60 yeah and all of a sudden they're <laughs> running it running a mile and barefoot or some of that like that would be a bad idea like if you've never trained barefoot jumping to your pr deadlift or squat barefoot probably not a good strategy oh, yeah. whatsoever but a kid like this who's been lifting barefoot for the last couple of years and seven years is it seven years yeah. is that we said yeah. yeah seven years and he's been progressing the way i mean that's he's fine yeah he's you're good super bro. comfortable with it Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our fitness guides. They're free. You can download all of them. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. 